Thank you so much, Charles, for that wonderful introduction. So it's another Monday. We're back. Um, the 13th of July, time check. It's approximately 9.34 p.m. And as usual, as we always do it, uh, we try to bring you, um, you know, a, 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 an inspiring story, okay? Every Monday, you know, just to give us an idea of what we really, we really are into and to also remind us of our various why. So um, the, to, on today's, today's, today's edition is very special because, um, you know, this person that I'm about to bring on stage or to bring to the fore is someone that I have, I had, I have admired right from the beginning from a distance, you know? Um, my very first time I attended a World Ventures Live event in, 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 was it in Pretoria, I think, Pretoria, South Africa. I saw this, I saw this man and I'm like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I've got no excuses. I've got no excuses. So tonight's guest um, is a wheelchair rugby player. Um, he's an IT professional. He's an entrepreneur and a travelpreneur as well. Um, CEO of So MNF Tech and Solutions. Um, he has run the New York City Marathon on high cycle, 42 kilometers in the year 2017. Um, he's a director with World Ventures, uh, which means that he has a team of not less than 180 people averaging 2,000 US dollars a month. Um, and trust me, ladies and gentlemen, um, you want to hear um, this very inspiring story tonight. But before then, uh, we've got a video for you. You got our friend Freddie right there. He's a director. He didn't ask to go through an accident, but he's defining his future. Freddie can't walk, but he goes out there and outworks works people who can walk. Freddie can't run, but he opened up the laptop more than anyone else out there. All right. Thank you so much um, for that. So we've got some 77 people on the call. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to roll. Um, our guest tonight is Mr. Freddie Intumba. Fred, can you hear me? Yes, yes, brother old. I can hear you, man. Awesome, man. It's good to see you. You look well. Are you well? Yes, I'm well. It's just too cold here today. So I ah. need to come Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. It's very cold today here in South it's Africa. Very cold today, huh? How yeah. have you been? How have you been? How was the weekend? What did you get up to? Oh man. I've been up to doing presentations and presentations, man. Mm. And, uh, you know, with the lockdown this side, uh, you know, we always in houses. And, uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's, the, it's that, family mm. and presentations. Mm. That's mm. What, what I can do and what I'm doing these days. Mm. And, of course, training my team. Okay. So how are you that side? Awesome. Uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, my story is not any different from yours as well, except for the no. code. Except for the code. Your code is natural. My, your code is natural. Mine is artificial. Ah, that's a good <laughs> so, one. Um, listen, man, welcome to our special Monday Night, night Live. We're going to go straight into this. Uh, my first question for you is, um, so who is Freddie? So for me, the first time I saw you, um, I wouldn't say I met you because we never really spoke. So the first time I saw you was at, at, at a live event. I think it was The View, you know. I signed up to World Ventures and in, and in two months, I'm being asked to go for training and I've not even made enough money that covers the training costs, but yet I had to go. So I show up at this training and I see this man in a wheelchair with so much passion, so much excitement and, you know, with the belief was just oozing out of his eyes. And I'm like, who is this? I just thought to myself, who is this? And I just walked away. So tell us, who is Mr. Freddie Intumba? Okay, Freddie Intumba uh, is a Congolese. I'm originally from DRC, Congo, uh, born in a family of uh, 11 uh, children. So yeah, same father, same mother. And uh, yeah, today people, most of the people that I know today know me from a guy on a wheelchair, but I was never on a wheelchair before uh came to africa for studies and, and and started working here 2008 uh involved in a motorbike accident and i was working already back then in a hospital for a long time actually eight months in hospital after my accident after the i think a week being discharged i decided to go back to work 
because I believed here, yeah, look, things happen to, uh, to, to people in life, they die, but I was still alive, so I was like, why not? I just went back to work, and uh, yeah, I, 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 love, I love God. Uh, I've always believed in, in miracles, and uh, I don't believe in miracles while doing nothing. I believe in miracles while expecting them and doing something about it, so that's, that's who Freddy is, and I'm a friendly guy. Uh, I love adventures. I love people. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So so tell us, how did you find WV? Um, just give us a vivid, a vivid narration of how you found WV. How did the story start? The phone call right from the invites. Were you someone who was invited, or did you chance on it, or whatever? How did you find WV, and on which date? Yeah. Um, on the actually on the tenth of November. A day after coming back from New York, from doing the New York Marathon uh, 2017, uh, a friend of mine from church, from the choir I used to sing in, he just calls me and he's like, Freddie, um, I know you just came back from, uh, from New York and you did your marathon. It was amazing. But I need to see you. I need to show you something. So I was tired, you know. I was really tired coming from a long trip. Uh, and... Uh, I just told him, okay, you can come over. So he came, he opened his laptop and he's like, Freddie, you know, uh, I know you've been traveling and uh, uh, I can see you love traveling already, but I need to show you this thing. So he switched on his laptop and he shows me a presentation. While I'm looking at the presentation, I'm just thinking, this guy is not serious. Why is he showing me this? After I spent so much money traveling, going to America, not even having the chance, you know, I went to New York, but I didn't even have the chance to go see the Statues of Liberty because mm. life was just too expensive that time. Mm. So now I'm looking at this thing, I'm thinking, where was this guy? So I was already sold, sold out by the videos. Mm. And then uh, as soon as he finished the video showing the, the, the travel and everything, I just told him, okay, what do I have to do? <laughs> and he said, no, man, wait, it's not, it's not finished. I need to show you the business side. So he showed me the business side. Wow. I could just look at it and I was thinking, wait a minute. Where was this thing? How come there are people making money in their spare time even? And I've been struggling here, yeah, building my business hmm. because I was, I was not only traveling. I was building my business also, uh, CLMNF in IT. So I was like, wow, wow, wow. I was completely sold out. I didn't even have to think twice. The only thing I didn't have at that time was money. I had mm. spent all my money already traveling. So mm. I told the guy, okay, look, I don't have the money. You know, I just came back from a holiday. Um, I'm broke. I'm properly broke. But give me a day or two. I'll get back to you. Dude, I didn't have to wait. Uh, I just made a few phone calls the next day, the money. And... That was the 10th of, uh, of November, 2017, and I got started. Mm, mm, and that mm. World Ventures for me, it started from that moment. I, I, I knew where, where I wanted to go with this business. So from that day on, that was okay. it. Okay. So, so, so why, why World Ventures? And first of all, did you have any network marketing experience before joining World Ventures? No network marketing experiences before. Nothing, nothing at all. Okay. I didn't even know the word network marketing before that. Mm. So I was just mm. all in mm. without mm. knowing what I was going into. Okay. So, so for you, was it more of the travel or the business? What got you, what got you more excited and more sold? Uh, yeah. Like I told you, it was already the, the travel. Just coming from a holiday, spending a lot of money. I was traveling before I went to India, I went to many countries before that. But now when I saw the opportunity, I could see myself going into more destinations and, and uh, a cheaper price in actually four or five star hotels. Mm. Come on, why not? So mm. I was sold by that first. Mm. And then uh, the business, like I told you, and uh, I don't know if you remember, back then there was uh, the fly card and me being an IT guy, I love gadgets. 
you mm. know, I was completely taken, blown away by that thing. So I was like, I need that card. Mm. Mm. And you know what? I even got that card two months later. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. So, so for you, what did you did you get off to a, to a fast start? What was what was what was your first one month like after after getting started? Wow, uh, to be honest with you, my first uh, one month was just amazing. Huh? Um, the guy who, who, who showed me the presentation, he told me, look, I only, because I asked him, why, why are you showing me this now? Why not before I travel? He <laughs> said, I joined a day before I, I called you. Mm. So I was like, okay, so what do we do? And he told me, no, don't worry. Uh, there's a system here. But my uplines, you know, I've organized trainings. We used to have trainings every Thursday called uh, uh, Thunder Thursday. And we would go there and, and receive training from other members that were there before. So I was like a student. I was a student. Everything they would tell me to do, I was just doing. <laughs> just do it. And they used to call me, Freddie, you are a, 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 a proper inviter. Because I will fill the room. Half of the room will be Freddie's friends. Mm. So that's so all I was doing. I'm actually interested. So uh, what were some of the invite, te invite techniques you were using? I was just calling my friends. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Okay, come. Let's chill at my place. They will come. Mm. Mm. I didn't, mm. Because they told me, don't say anything. Mm. Just invite your friend as you invite them to your place. So mm. I'm like, okay. And then my friend will come and find chairs and see <laughs> some other dudes here that they don't know. So they're mm. like, what's going on here? Because they are my friends. And remember, they told me, start with the people that trust you. Uh, they even told me, you know, the kind of people that you'll be stuck on the road at one o'clock in the morning and you call them, they'll come. So I had mm. all those people here around me. So mm. I started with them. Uh, I was just doing whatever they were telling me. And mm. the first, Three weeks, I made close to two thousand US dollars. Wow! From uh, direct commissions, I didn't even know cycles existed. So I had cycled. I, I I didn't know. I, I, I didn't just, know what. Was was yeah, I was making money. And at some point, I even asked my mentors, "What's going on here? I've got, I've got this much money. You told me there's commission, but where's this extra two hundred dollars coming? coming? Where's from? this other money coming?" And uh, yeah, I was a proper student at that time. So all mm. I was doing was just invite, invite, and let them do the job. Mm. How soon did you get your four? <laughs> uh, the first uh, two days, huh? Yeah. First two days. Okay, you yeah. got your four in two days. Right. Now, um, so you, you got off to a great start. You knew you wanted to do this. So, I mean, you, know, you didn't even need any... I mean, you just was listening to everything that your mentors were teaching you. So tell me, um, um, when did you attend your first training and what has training done for you? I mean, you, 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 got, the, you got the drift right from the beginning, but I'm sure attending your first training made, made some, some amount of difference in your business. So can you tell us um, how quickly you plugged into the training and what it did for your business? Okay. Um... I plugged in in November, like I told you, and then the next training was Momentum in, uh, in was it in January. But before uh, my first, you know, my first month, like I told you, I had so many people joining, but then end of December, beginning of January, they started quitting. So now I started calling my, my uplines and telling them, what's going on? These people are quitting and all that. And then they say, Freddie, uh, just bring more people. I'm like, yeah, but uh, I'm bringing more people. I need to keep them. And they say, no, Freddie, you must come to trainings. Okay. How much are the trainings? Then they told me the price. And they say, they told me, if you want your team to grow, you must come to this training. Wow. Harold, I told you I paid uh, the training and I paid VIP. And uh, I was like, no, I, I can't let this thing just fall apart, you know, and I had already made some money. So I tested, I tested what, what the, the, the company could give me. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this training. Anyways, I'm even taking the money that I just won. I'm paying the, the training. So uh, I booked for Momentum and uh, the night before Momentum, I fell sick. 
I felt sick and I missed momentum completely. I missed momentum. I was really, 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 really discouraged. But, uh, you know, from the church where I go to, my pastor has a, a, has a book called Finding a Way to Win. And there's another book uh, also by the title of um, Su Successive Breakthroughs, you know. So in that book, he talks about every time challenges come around, there's always a way, you know. If a wall comes in front of you, either you climb it or you break it, but you need to be on the other side. Don't stay on one side and complain and all that. So I was complaining and then I remembered uh, that book and then I decided, no, I'm going to push through. And then uh, that was momentum. So the worst thing was my upline quit. And uh, my, my uplines, uplines also quit. Where we used to have our Thursday training, uh, it was not available anymore. And I found myself there alone. And uh, there was one marketing director just, uh, not, not directly above me, but he was up there far between me and my, my different up, upline. So I reached out to, me, to him and I told him, uh, look, Jason, uh, I, know, I know you're busy, but I need your help. And he told me, Freddie, uh, get, get more people, get more people. I'm like, but how do I do that? I've, I've been doing what, you, what I was told to do, but not knowing that I had stopped, actually, because at some point I thought, okay, now I know. I can do my own things, you know, I can figure out things around. So I started going different avenues to try and buy people or get my business to work, and it was just falling apart. So I decided to book to book uh, to book again for boot camp. So can you see the the, the gap between there? Mm -hmm. So boot camp came uh, in June, 2018. Wow, I was just amazed. I didn't know this thing was so big. I knew World Ventures was something, but I didn't know it was what I saw on that day. Uh, boot camp. I met the 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 the, the, the CEO of of World Ventures back then. It was uh, Josh Payne. I saw uh, I had met Sachin Governor in between, but I saw the, the other IMDs. He was double twice. Uh, yeah, double IMD back then. I saw the IMDs from America. I saw the people from all different countries, man, and the teaching from Mark Aceta. Wow. It just something clicked in my mind. Mm. While mm. I was listening to them, I was like, "Okay, you see what what you've been doing wrong is that everything you were saying." I, I kept I kept feeling like, "Okay, this is what I was doing wrong. This is what I wasn't doing. This is this is." So every time I was listening to them talking, I was like, "Yeah, now I understand why I, I was I, I was falling apart. Why my team has fell apart here yeah. and." I went to that training only with one uh, uh, team member. I even paid for that guy to come mm. because they told me training will really, really build your team. So I was like, okay, let me bring this one guy. You know, he was always there with me uh, while building, building the team, we were building together. So, man, from that moment on, I just learned. I, and it was my first time. I even... Uh, 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 encounter personal development. Personal development. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you plug into boot camp, and it's been well, you know one training after the other, after the other, after the other. Now, um, yeah, you you're building from Congo, right? And um, yeah, it, it, your team is predom predominantly in Congo, or you have you have team members all around. What What are some of the countries that you are building from right now? If you, if you, if you, if you care to share. Yeah, uh, the biggest part of my team is in Congo, okay? Uh, but uh, I've got members here in South Africa. I've got members uh, in, in, in France, in Belgium, in Netherlands. I've got in different countries mm -hmm. uh, where I've got some friends there and people that I reach out on, on mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, But my biggest team is in, in the Congo. Mm, mm, mm. Now, having done this for for close to three years now, I mean, obviously you've gone through a lot of you know faces. I'm sure you've gone to, through the ups and downs, 
quite a number of times because the longer you are in it, the more you have experienced that. So yeah. um, you want to share with us some of the ups and downs you've had to go through building this business, um, you know, right, right from the time you actively started building. Yeah, okay. My apps, like I told you, when I started, straight away getting people, getting paid, I was so happy. And then, you know, first down moment, like I told you already, almost everyone left. <laughs> you, know, you make so much money and then all of a sudden you lose your whole team. So uh, it was a down moment. Uh, but like I said, having tested the money, you know, uh, I just told myself, no, you can't just quit here. And, uh, you know, I remember I told you I've done the New York Marathon. So let me just tell you uh, the mindset that uh, I've, I have have in this business from that marathon. Okay. Um, you know, you know when, when you practice, it was new. Even me doing the marathon, it was something completely new. Some guy just told me, Freddie, do you want to do the New York Marathon? I'm thinking, is this guy crazy? 42 kilometers. I can't walk. You know, I had all these uh, things in my head. And then uh, I asked him, do you know someone who has done this? He showed me a guy. And then I told him, okay, if that guy can do it, I can do it too. What do I have to do? He said, you have to train. Train for a year and then you go there. How the first, uh, every day I will train, the first 20 minutes, they start, they seem like it's easy, but then after 20 minutes, everything becomes very difficult. You feel like giving up. <laughs> you feel like quitting, you know, your muscles are burning. Everything is just so difficult. And uh, the guy was telling me, when, when it becomes difficult like that, it means you can do four or five times more times that you've already done. And I have that mindset now, even in world ventures. The first time I faced, I faced that adversity, everyone quitting, I was just thinking, okay, it's just those difficult times that shows you that you have four or five times more potential than what you've done already. And yeah, basically, uh, on, my, in my, on my down moments, I would think of my why, why I've started this, my family, uh, uh trying to 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 bring my you know make my parents living uh uh, uh, uh financial freedom you know I, I was not even doing that at the beginning for me i was doing it for them i wanted them to be free so every time i'll go down like that i think about that and then i also think about remember what you've done is nothing what you can do is is even bigger than and this so down moments are just down moments but when you go up you you, you even forget these moments mm -hmm. so yeah and then uh that was the first down moment second one is after boot camp i decided to finally go and build in congo first time huh? first time after probably six months i decided okay let me go and build this in congo i leave boot camp i go to congo you know you pay your ticket so uh, and then I went there, different, different vibes, different type of people, you know, the way they see things different from here in South Africa. So I decided, okay, let me do it according to their lifestyle. So I'll book a, a venue. I booked a few venues, had uh, three conferences. Actually, you see the, 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 the room is full. But for a whole week, no one signed up. And then I came back. I came wow. back having spent all that money, no one signed up. All that money in Congo, nobody signed up. How many days? How many, that, how nobody many days signed up. Spend? How many days did you spend there? I spent there a, a week. A week. With no three, sign ups. No sign ups. Spending uh, 500 US dollars uh, to book a venue, you know, and all that for three for three. Three days, huh? three days, venues like that. People came. It's not like no one came. People came. They just looked at me and said, okay, this is amazing and all that, but they didn't believe because I was just one of them. So I was like, okay, it's one of those people because from boot camp, they taught us that some will, some won't. So what? <laughs> so what? Yeah. 
So I was like, Samuel, you know, I was repeating that in my head, you know, but still with the pain, eh? with the pain in my chest, but in my head there, I was like, yeah, Samuel, Samuel, so what? Let me just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So I came back to South Africa and then I booked again for the view from the edge. Uh, so at that time, I only had six sign-ups, you know, six people in my team. Six people. Uh, what, were you, what level were you before before coming to six? You know, back then there was no two star, three stars. Yeah. So I was just in between. Uh, okay. A qualified. No uh, yeah, yeah. But I waiting. had, yeah, I had, I went up to twenty nine people. Mm. You know, when everything f- fell apart. Which is but like today's, today's three star rep. Mm. Yeah. So six people left in my team, you know, boot camp, going to Congo, all that. It was really, really hard, you know. Uh, you know, you spend your tickets, you spend the money for the venues there and all that, and then you come back and there's nothing, no results, no results. So I went to the view. View from the edge, uh, uh, some people that saw me in the Congo, they were also m- members from Congo, they reached out to me uh, just before the view. They told me, oh, are you going to go to the view? I said, yeah. And then uh, they're like, can we meet? I said, yeah, let's meet at the view. That's the view 2018. Uh, we met there. That's Pasha Luzo, marketing director Pasha Luzo. I don't know if you know it. Yeah, we met there. And uh, and I met another guy, uh, uh, Jen. He's a director also. But when we all met there, Pasha had only one person Jen had no one. I was the only one with six people. So, you know, coming there, I was feeling bad, like, oh man, building a team. I've got no, I have only have six people. It felt like I had no one. Now I meet this guy that tells me he's got one person and the <laughs> other one tells me I've got no one. So I was like, okay, um, you know what you should do? I told him, let's get together. Let's start building together. You know, let's have a, like a WhatsApp group, three people, me, Pasha, and Jay, and let's start building from there. Mm. And then after the view from the edge, that was just it. The view was uh, an eye opening for all of us. Mm. When we got out of out of that place, uh, I went from six people to three hundred people in after after a month. A month and and few days, mm. I had three hundred people in my team. Wow! After the yeah, view. Mm. yeah. After the view, uh, senior. Well, what, did well, what did the magic from having six what? people to three hundred? Uh, yeah, the confidence, the the training that I received there. Um, so by the way, these these are pictures. These are pictures of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, Me and Josh Payne there. Uh, that's that's yeah, actually Mexico. boot camp. That's boot camp. Uh, 2018. You and know, I after this. At, at the time, how many people did you have? Six. Six. This is, okay. Yeah, this is still that's the same boot camp. Yeah. Yeah. Six okay. people there, and then after that, I was confident. Okay, I went to Congo. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mention something. Remember, I told you. After that boot camp, that was my first personal development mm. uh, uh, training. Uh, training, yeah. So after that, it happened that they say Robert Kiyosaki is coming to South Africa. I didn't know Robert Kiyosaki before World Ventures. You know, in mm. all the presentation, they were showing us Robert Kiyosaki, this guy who keeps saying the richest people in the world. You know, <laughs> that sentence it was course, it was in my head course. all the time. Mm. So when I heard Robert Kiyosaki was coming. I'm like, no, I need to see this guy. I need to see this guy. So I had booked for, for him. Uh, and then straight after my trip to Congo, I came back because he was coming. Yeah, so I came back. I went to his training and then the coaching. Everything they were talking about was related to network marketing. They kept saying network marketing requires time. You need to build it. You need to believe in it. You need to... I was like, wow. I was really blown away by Robert Kiyosaki. And then the view from the edge, just, I was confident after the view from the edge. And then, 
yeah that that was me and mm-hmm. i just and i was building i was i didn't even go back to congo mm. i was here in south africa but now a new team was you know i started having my team there in congo in mm. congo mm. and guess mm. what happened you know talking about planting seeds like uh, jim ron says you need to keep planting seeds you need to keep planting seeds and because i had shown to so many people um um what's his name um zampierre zampierre mm-hmm. a boy, boy sense, mm-hmm. and uh darren dix decided mm-hmm. to go to congo mm-hmm. and they were going there for pasha for pasha mm-hmm. luzo mm-hmm. and i felt bad because i was like oh i'm here and then they're going there so uh, i just told myself okay you're not gonna miss out stay positive and I just re-invited a few guys that I invited to, you know, when I did all my three uh, uh, presentations there, full of, the, the room were, were full, but no one signed mm-hmm. up. I just re-invited a few guys there. So when mm-hmm. they went there and they saw the people with results, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, every, uh, Daniel, uh, Darren Dix was there for three days. Every time people will come there, they'll say, I've been invited by Freddie. I've been invited by Freddie. I've been... I didn't even know these guys that are coming. Who are these people? How do they know me? Not knowing they were the guys that saw me during the presentations during the other days. So, yeah, that's me working at the gym, you know. Mm, mm, uh, mm, awesome. I understood one thing, you know. You just have to keep pushing, keep mm. pushing keep pushing mm. you don't build up muscles in mm. one day mm. amazing you know? yeah. amazing yeah amazing amazing so on, on on that note of 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 pushing um i'd like to find out what you know you have mentioned obviously the kind of phases that you've had to go through in building your business and stuff like that but you know what are some of the real life cha- physical challenges that you've had to also endure how has your you know your 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 physical challenge being in a physically challenged position how has it affected your business i mean has it done more good than harm um have there been times when you have been rejected just because um you're stuck in a wheelchair or ha- have you uh, uh, encountered people who actually you know empathize with you and probably joined your team just you know how has that impacted your business well uh <laughs> I will be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I just take advantage of this, you know, because I believe that uh, uh, in every adversity there's always opportunity. Okay, ever since ever since I've been on a wheelchair, you won't believe it. The number of people that I've met, the 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 things that I've done in my life, uh, it's, it's just just because I'm on a wheelchair, you know. And it's not only because I'm on a wheelchair, it's also because I've decided that, look, you're on a wheelchair, this is just a vehicle, okay? Just do the things that you want to do and that you always wanted to do and just see this thing as a vehicle that will take you there, you know? So uh, at the beginning, you know, uh, you know, I, I would see people looking at me feeling sorry and things like that. I always smile and tell them, I'm not dying, mm. you know? Uh, mm. I'll achieve what I want to achieve. I'm not dying, I'm not dying. And people will think, is this guy crazy or what? We're feeling sorry for him, but he's there smiling, you know, talking to us. And uh, I, I went, I, I use that same attitude when, when uh, I go to presentations. People look at me and I just act normal. You know, I don't want to act different. But mm. now, when I do a presentation, of course, use what you've got, right? Mm. I've got the wheelchair. Mm. So if people have to feel sorry to join, let them feel sorry, but they'll join. Mm. Mm. And uh, if people need to be inspired, let me do the inspiration, and they'll, mm. they'll join. So I'm using uh, this as an advantage, you know? I don't <laughs> see... Yeah. Uh, it's true. I've got I've got challenges. I've got a lot of challenges. If, if I start talking about my personal challenges due to my uh, disability uh, or, or you know physical disability, 
it's it's hard it's hard people won't you won't believe it you know every time every morning when i wake up uh in my mind i have to face not my day you know everyone's got the uh, challenges in their days but i have to first in my mind face my physical challenge you know mm. Mm. so when i wake up when i wake up in my mind already i'm I've, I've beaten that, you know. I told myself, okay, it's just another day. This is not who you are, but you know where you want to be and where you're going. So get on the chair and go do it, you know. So I, now I face my that challenge. Now, yeah, moving around and stuff like that. I've learned how to drive my car, you know. Now I can drive my, my car. So... Uh, it's sometimes, sometimes I'd like to find out from you and it's it's sorry to cut you, but it's very important that um we address this and you know there was actually the next question I was coming to. What what keeps you going? I mean, what 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 gets you out of your bed to still want to go build this thing? I mean, because there are a lot of people who are just throwing the towel, they probably just, you know, decide to, you know, parade in the street to beg for arms, you know, or just to, you know, take advantage of their position to solicit from people, you know, and, but what drives you, what sets you apart from, you know, the average person who is stuck in the hotel, who decides to, you know, you know, go to the streets to beg for arms, and as opposed to you, what keeps you going? What, why, what, what hurts you and what, what keeps you going? All right. So with me, I've always told myself, Freddie, you are not dead for a reason. You are still here for, for you to achieve something, you know? So until you've seen that thing, you must keep pushing. So that's basically me. So every time I wake up in the morning, I was looking for that thing. You know, when, when I saw the opportunity to go to New York to do the marathon, I was thinking, yeah, okay, I need to do this. I need to achieve something in my life, you know. I can't just sit there in bed and do nothing. I need to do something that might inspire someone out there. That was just me, you know, even when I was in hospital back then. I'd like I, I told you, if I start telling you about my stories, uh, some people will feel uh, bad and all that. But it's just me, you know. Uh, I like helping people. I like doing some, some, you know, something for someone. And first, you know, like Jim Rohn said, if you solve other people's problem, your problem will disappear. Mm -hmm. So by doing everything, uh, uh, all these things every day, mm -hmm. I realize that I don't even see this wheelchair anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't even see these uh, um, what all the other challenges that I've got, you know, mm -hmm. from being on a wheelchair. I don't even see that anymore because I know I'm going to. Ah, oh, no. Let me tell you, Arrow. I, I I used to drive. I drove how many times? I will leave my house at 9 a.m., you know, with my team and drive from presentation to presentations and come back at 1. At one, one day, we even came back at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, just because I wanted to see my team members. I had made money already, but I wanted them to make money too. Mm. And that's mm. how I, 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 I got a senior rep second senior rep, third senior rep, and just from, from me going up and down, up and down, up and down, and people were asking me, why are you doing this? I just said, I don't know. I just want them to succeed, you know? Mm, 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 and mm. Uh, yeah, by Amazing. helping them, mm. yeah. Mm, mm, mm. yeah. Amazing. So, so tell us, um, we've got some 96 people on the call right now, and um, I'd like to know, um how what 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 kind of materials do you feed on i mean because you know the, the 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 battle is always won here it's always won in the head so what you're putting into your head is definitely you know what transcends into the the results so tell us um what what are some of the personal development materials that you're feeding on right now and um which ones would you recommend okay um i always believe that when you do a business remember i told you i mean it and when I was building my IT business, I was reading a lot of Bill Gates stuff, you know, things related to what I was doing. Uh, I still do now and then. But then when I got into World Ventures, I didn't know anything about network marketing. So uh, I remember the mistakes that I told you I was making at the beginning. 
uh, I was I was listening, listening until I thought I knew, and then I started applying some of my IT stuff, and it didn't work. But then when I went to the first training, I realized, no man, you need to to read more about network marketing. You need to listen more uh, uh, and watch many videos. Look, Mark Aceta on, and me on, and Mark Aceta on YouTube, I'll listen to him now every time, every time repeatedly. Robert Kiyosaki, uh, I've, I, can't, I can't read. I can't read from books huh? because mm. you can see my hands. Mm. I can't move my hands. Huh? I can't move my fingers. So yeah. I can't read books. So I always have uh, audio books mm. and videos. I play them in my car all the time. So uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I don't know how many times I've played that in my car. So it's, it's really a, a mind opener. That book, if, if you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I don't know what you're doing in this business. Mm. You have mm. to read that. It will change your mindset. It will change your, your attitude towards many things in life. Not only uh, this business, but many, many, many other things. It it just revo- revolutionized my mind when I, uh, uh, the first time I listen it and every time I listen it, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's Robert Kiyosaki, Jim Rohn. Uh, Jim Rohn for me, I think, is the father of network marketing. That's mm-hmm. that's for me. When you listen to Jim Rohn, mm-hmm. you know where you've been doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. When you listen to Mark Asteta, you can feel like okay he's just talking like jim ron because those guys will just fill you up and uh, i even have uh, this uh, video okay i've put that on an audio now of jim ron it's it's called building your network marketing where he talks about uh, planting your seeds and he compares to the to the bible um verses where he say you know when a man goes uh, to plant his seed He's got so many seeds. He's walking on the street, and then some seeds fall on on the floor, and those seeds are the new people that you're trying to recruit. But there are birds that come and eat those seeds. You know, those are the people that you, you know, you invite someone, and because you've used the word presentation, and then that person tells his other friend, "I'm going to a presentation," and then they tell you, "Ah, oh, you're going to those one of those things." You know, all those stories. That's what keeps me going, and that's what's building my mind. And then uh, I also um, uh, listen to um, Robin Banks. I don't know if you know Robin Banks. Uh, he's South African, uh, but uh, he talks about uh, mind power. Your mind power, your mind is, is the center of everything. You know, as I always tell people, the only disability in life is bad attitude. So it's all up in your mind there. Eh? So I, I, I listen to, to him a lot because he talks about uh, uh, how to keep your mind always positive, you know, how to tell your, your, your brain. You start by telling your brain, I'm, I'm a winner, you know. If you, mm. if you say I'm a winner every day, even if you're not today, you see yourself like that, you know you will keep going until you become a winner. Mm. But if you wake up and you tell yourself, ah, this is so hard, I want to give up, you'll end up giving up. So that's not, that's not words that I have in my, in my mind, even in hard times, even when my parents are telling me, man, you must give, give up that, this thing, you know? My mother mm. used to tell me that when I lost a few people at the beginning. Mm. But the day I gave her my, my, my pioneer card, you know, <laughs> that language changed, you know? And, uh, but yeah, yeah, you must stay positive, you know, regardless of adversities and things like that you must stay positive i'm telling you mm. uh, awesome you think, we've, got, yeah. we, we've got we've got some we've got some we've got some um 15 to 20 minutes um to wrap up this and yeah. um i'd like for us to pick up a few questions from some of our listeners so there's a text here from a, from an anonymous attendee that says what happens when you keep on failing in your business and how do you get up so you have gone through a lot of um you know a lot of phases where people have quit your business i mean you know how would you address this this question? Uh, okay, when people quit, for example, uh, I remember the first time I spoke to session governor, and then uh, I was telling him that people just quit my team, and he said, "Yeah, Freddie, put another six. 
<laughs> so every time people quit, I just remember that. Put more people. Don't 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 cry. Don't uh, stay and complain about the, the quitters because the quitters are quitters, and uh, just find the winners, you know. And I keep mm. flipping cards, flip, uh, flipping the cards and all that. So mm. yeah, that's my attitude, you know. When when things go down, I'm looking mm. for more people. Mm, mm, mm. So what's what's a typical day in in, in the life of um, Freddy Ntumba? When you wake up, what's what's a typical day? What do you usually get up to when you wake up? Ah, when I wake up, wow! I, I'm going to tell you my day. I don't mind. Uh, so I wake up usually six six thirty and uh, go do my my sport at that time. You know, before that's the, I'm going to talk to you about a day before the uh, lockdown. So mm. I'll go train. When I come back from my training, it's about nine or ten o'clock. Take my shower. It takes really long. <laughs> and then uh, when I finish, I start calling my teams. You know, I've got close to what? How many WhatsApp groups? Five groups. You know, because different countries and and sometimes different uh, time frames. So I speak to them. Uh, spend time with my parents check up my business a little bit uh, during the day uh, because it's in IT, it's also online. So I don't have to be on that uh, that long. And then, uh, yeah, travel parties here and there. And then, uh, hold on, please, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, guys. So uh, we're still here hanging out with Director Freddie Intumba, uh, one of our directors um, in South Africa, actively building in Congo and beyond. So um, just keep your questions um, on hold. We're, we're definitely picking the questions in a few minutes when he rejoins us. Um, we hope you're taking notes and um, you know picking the nuggets and the experiences from this very experienced and talented um, man. So um, welcome yeah, back. I'm Freddy. back. I'm um, back. I'm back. Yeah, you know, this is just one of the my daily challenges. Yeah, being on a wheelchair, so I had to quickly adjust something. It's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm back. So, so uh, yeah. you were saying? Yeah. So my day is like that. You know, I, I drive and then uh, I'm I'm trying to have a normal life, man. It's not a mm. wheelchair. Eh? I'm mm. trying to have a normal life. I've got friends that I visit. Uh, but since World Ventures, uh, my spare time is equal to World Ventures. Mm. Spare time mm. is not is not uh, going and, and drinking and uh, you know spending unnecessary mm. money on on stuff. No, it's mm. not like that anymore. Uh, doing personal development, I just learned that. Uh, you start building your you build your fortunes in your spare time, you know, especially when you have a job and all that. Yeah. So I use my spare time now wisely, and then uh, for me it's world ventures or or going to a different personal development. I don't just go to to world ventures trainings. I go to as soon as there's a, a, a seminar somewhere, I'm the guys out there, you know. Yeah. I need to. To bring myself up to date all the time. Mm. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're going to take some questions from 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 some of our guests. Um, we've got uh, my very good friend, marketing director Ziggy, away all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. So Ziggy, uh, if you can hear me, your hand is raised. You have the floor. Hello. Uh, sorry, I actually didn't raise my hand. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's a mistake. Oh, I I guess. Guess. <laughs> well, what so um, uh, uh, interview, and um, I decided to join in to listen to you because I actually met him in one of the trainings in Cape Town. Not physically, I I met him there um, with some people, and I was very inspired also to see him at that training event, you know. So listening to your story has just been very, very inspiring and uh, absolutely amazing, just um, how you have um, used your attitude to build. 
you know, in a positive way. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, sorry, I don't have a question at the moment, but I'm just so glad that I allowed myself to enjoy this, uh, this uh, sharing. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank right. you so much. Thank you so much um, the next person we're going to allow on the floor is Date. Um, date, if you can hear me, please take it away. So Date... Hello? Hello? Oh, All right. Probably he does know that name of date. Um, I guess. But we're going to give Nancy the chance. Nancy, if you can hear me, please take it away. Hello? Hello, Nancy, can you hear me? Um, someone has, so, okay. So, um, Lucia, 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 Lucia is on the call and um, her hands are raised to so marketing director, Lucia, I guess, um, you have the floor. Hey guys, how are you there? Good. Good, good, good Lucia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this platform. I really appreciate it. Uh, we are so much inspired right now. But really, I would like to ask you, what are the challenges that you are facing right now during this COVID? Okay, during this COVID is um, the people that think you have to wait for COVID to finish to get started or to start working again. Um, look, it's a... It's, 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 uh, lockdown mentality and uh, for me yeah i think it's it's what everyone is facing at the moment people are in lockdown phases but what i do when they they they, they tend to show me that i tell them look at uh, i always i always make them look at uh, amazon i always tell them to look at facebook look at netflix i'm telling them you see it's covid time but they're making money. So they're not waiting for COVID to finish to start doing something. So do it now and you make more money when the COVID will be finished. Mm. So that's, that's my approach to those people. And it's like a, a wake up call for them sometimes. Awesome. Okay. So there's, there's a comment here from Frida that says, great session with director Freddie. I first met him at The View in 2018. And anytime I feel like giving up, he motivates me to get up and move on. So, um, she's asking, what does he do when he's down? I think um, he answered that a bit earlier. So um, I'm going to give the chance to Cox. Um, so Cox, if you can hear me, your hands are raised, you have the floor. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Cox, we can hear you. Please make it snappy. All right. Um, uh, bonsoir, Monsieur. <laughs> bonsoir, bonsoir. <laughs> um, I am so excited uh, to hear from you. Actually, uh, I was going to ask a question, but uh, Harold. Any, took any, that question, from my any question, any question, any question. Don't yeah. worry, any question. I love questions. Harold, Harold took that out of my mouth because I really wanted to ask if people really sympathize with you and sign up. But then you vividly explained that, and I was so excited about it. And I'm also excited that you, you have the, the mind power, which is so wonderful. I, I really wish I could learn that from you. Thank you very much. Thank you oh, so thank much, you. folks. You so um, much. Thomas, Thomas, your hands are up. If you can hear me, um, you are the last person, and then we wrap up. Hello, hello. Um, I'm super excited this evening hearing from uh, Freddie. Great, great, great having you. I'm highly inspired. Uh, but there's one quick question I would like to ask you. Did you ever, for any reason, encounter somebody you wanted to um, register on and you tell you that, uh, uh, I want to get my four people first before uh, I get myself registered? Um, did you ever encounter a thing so like many, that? Yes, yes. So many, so many people like that. Uh, what I tell them, I always give them an example of opening a restaurant. I always tell them, look, if you want to open your restaurant, 
you go look for for client first or you first open the restaurant and then people start coming to your restaurant and then every time i tell them that they're like ha ah, ha ha you're right so you mean i need to start first and then get my phone so i'm like yeah just think think about it like a restaurant like that and yeah that's how i approach those people awesome awesome just taking note of that that's definitely a very very interesting way of addressing that objection so um freddie thank you so much for taking time out your last words um we've done um almost an hour already so your final words for people that are going through a lot people who um in one way or the other are challenged okay whether physically or even mentally um or even you know economically there's so many people going through different challenges and they feel like throwing in the towel i'd like for you to share a few words with them on how they can keep their heads afloat okay uh first of all you must remember that everywhere you go there are always challenges okay there's no businesses that there's no challenges there's no one here on earth that there's no challenges it's not because I'm only challenged by the wheelchair that I don't face your challenges. I face all of them. But the only thing you need to remember is why you've started. Okay? If you reach your goal, if the question is no, you have no rights to give up on yourself. You know? Because, like I always tell people, you know, people uh, tend to say uh, uh, the word, like, this is a scam. This is a scam. This is a scam. You know why people think it's a scam? Because there's no results. But, and they will also explain to you that a scam is when they promise you something and then they don't give you uh, what they've promised you. Now, you scamming yourself when you decide to quit because when you join, you promise yourself to make money. You pr promise yourself to reach the top. Now you're leaving, you're scamming yourself. So, don't quit, okay? Because challenges are everywhere. Learn how to overcome them. And be patient because uh, through pushing hard, you push through and you break through all those challenges. So, awesome. Awesome. yeah. Awesome. Through pushing hard, you break through the challenges. Thank you so much for your for those for those nuggets. Amazing um, nuggets here. I'm going to look out for Robin Banks and and probably check him out and start following. Yeah, him. you have to. You have to definitely. Uh, thank you so much. I've I've taken I've, I've definitely taking taken down some notes and I'm going to apply. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Freddie. Um, listen, man, I'd like to congratulate you for all your achievements and the wonderful work that you're doing out there. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, the, the, the breakthrough is, 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 is closer than you ever think. Thank you so much for taking time out. Well, I'll take Thank you so much, Harold. Thank you so much for, for being on our call, Monday Night Live. Same time next week, we're back with yet another guest. Uh, my name is Harold Amenya, Marketing Director, um, Permission to Fall Out. Have a good night.